Hello folks, Robert from Marine Depot here and welcome to episode number two of our Moat Aquarium's drop-off tank build. In our last episode, we asked you guys which sump we should use to upgrade the standard glass sump that comes with the aquarium. Well, the results were pretty clear and we'll be using the MD prototype sump on our tank. These new sumps were made for us by Trigger Systems and will be available on our website soon. Be sure to sign up for our email newsletter in order to stay up to date with these new MD sumps and all of the latest happenings here at Marine Depot. In addition to the cable management brackets, dosing tube holders, and the chamber that can be used as either a refugium or an ATO reservoir, the new MD sumps have a ton of other great features. We really like the larger 7-inch filter socks that will last longer between cleanings. The probe holder, the heater holder, the filter sock drain silencer, and the adjustable water level with self-adjusting foam block really set this sump apart and will surely come in handy when building this tank. Instead of using the 30-inch sump that fits nicely inside the tank stand, we decided to use the larger 36-inch sump and install it next to the aquarium. Why, you ask? Well, the biggest reason is that we wanted to have easier access to the sump so we can better show you guys the equipment we test and use in future videos. The larger water volume will help to make the system more stable, and the extra room will come in handy for all of the gadgets that will be added to the aquarium. After mapping out the plumbing, we gathered all the parts we would need and cut all of the pipes to size. We assembled all of the plumbing without glue for a dry fit. This helps us to ensure that when we do apply the glue, all of the fittings and pipes are set correctly. We needed a way to stabilize the long runs of PVC pipes, so we created a mounting board to support the plumbing. After getting the PVC mounted, we drilled a couple of holes for the power cords to run through, slipped a couple of plastic grommets into the holes to clean up the edges, and then attach some power strips on the back side of the board to keep them away from the water and to better manage all of the power plugs. Now I know some of you are probably wondering about a controller for this tank, which is definitely in the plans, but we're gonna tackle that topic in a future episode. We glued the pipes together with some clear PVC cement to help keep it looking nice. The Mode Aquarium comes standard with UPVC, which does not directly connect to standard Schedule 40 PVC fittings without some adaptation. We were able to utilize a few simple parts from a local home improvement store to adapt to standard Schedule 40 PVC on the drain line. Details of the parts we use can be found in the description below. For the return, we created a simple manifold for future upgrades and additions. A short length of vinyl tubing is used between the return pump and our manifold to help dampen vibration and to allow us to easily service the return pump. Each of the outlets on the manifold has a 3 quarter inch ball valve that will allow us to control the flow of water. These manifolds really come in handy for feeding reactors because it allows you to feed multiple reactors from a single pump and eliminates the need for multiple small power heads in your sump. This will help to clear up space and reduce the power cord clutter. These manifolds can also be used to pump water out of your system for a water change, which really comes in handy with large tanks because it can take quite some time to siphon water out of your display tank. Finally, another short length of 3 quarter inch vinyl tubing is used to connect our manifold to the UPVC pipe that comes with the Moat Aquarium. We use metal hose clamps on the vinyl tubing connections to keep everything secure. Now that we have the tank plumbed and ready to go, it's time to choose our live rock and get water into this tank for cycling. We stock a variety of different dry rock here at Marine Depot, and I definitely wanted the freedom of using a combination of branch, shelf, and standard rock inside of the tank. So what's it going to be? The Carib Sea Life Rock or the Aquamax Dry Rock. The Carib Sea Life Rock is man-made of aragonite-based material and infused with spores of live bacteria to help quicken the cycle time. It is also colored with various shades of pink and purple to mimic coral and algae. The Aquamax Dry Rock is naturally collected so every individual rock has a unique organic shape. The rock is sun-dried and free of living hitchhikers and pests that are commonly found on naturally collected live rock. You can let us know which rock option you'd like us to use by clicking on the poll card in the upper right corner of this video and then tune into our next episode to see this aquascape come alive. We do appreciate all of you for watching and until next time, take care and happy reef keeping.